Well, let me make sure to give you a couple of tips mm -hmm. yep. if you want to continue learning. If we can go to my screen here, uh, let's make sure we do the Cloud Skills Challenge. You'll get yep. a free, mm -hmm. a free, uh, a complete challenge to win certification vouchers mm -hmm. for free, which are good. Another reminder about uh, Microsoft Learn, aka.ms mm -hmm. forward slash SDC forward slash Power Plat, and let's not forget, you want to talk about this one, Donna? Yes, so Power Platform Community Conference. Now that you've seen all these tech sessions, I actually have an assignment for everyone. I thought you'd all, you, you're like, oh, I've gotten homework all day. No, and here's the ultimate homework that you absolutely must do, because I know who you are, which is, now that you've watched 17 people present sessions, there has to be some piece of technology you saw today that you're like, that's interesting. I want to learn this. So what I would love for you to do is to go make a thing of your own. It doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't need to demo it on, at a conference, but something that you can take a screenshot of and share. You know how to find us on Twitter. It's not a secret. Um, ping us on Twitter, ping us on LinkedIn. When it works. When it works. <laughs> share your screenshot, share your project, share a link to your project. I do not care because we would love to see what you have done with your knowledge today because just learning like this is fine, but until you're applying it, you're not really skilling yourself. And it's on you to skill yourself. And the key is, as you've been going, hopefully you've been having these little sparks of, oh, I mm -hmm. could do this, or yep. I could do that, or mm -hmm. I could do this. Pick one of those threads and you pull on it. Exactly. Should I keep doing this? Stop or is doing this, that. Is your, stop doing it. Like it's there's weird. a pull it out, you it's, know? Stop doing it. I should be a mime. Never do this. Why is this happening? Why? This? No. No. Okay. Anyway, guess what? So the most exciting part of the day has arrived. And this is the part where you learn what you even do with these skills. So in the next segment, we're going to hear from four amazing people. Joe Camp, who did a demo earlier and bravely recovered from a failed demo. Ana Ines Urutia, who is our friend out of Chile. Johnny Sinclair, who is the brother of Jeremy Sinclair, who's wearing his favorite black shirt. And uh, Mary Thompson, who is a single mother who uh, transformed her life and her son's life with Power Platform to get her dream job. All four of these people navigated their own various career paths, and now they have DIY'd a career for themselves that they really like, and they'd like to share their advice with you today. So shall we bounce to the panel? Should we do it? I think so. Maybe not. What? The it is a little thing? early. I mean, it's we got three minutes. We still yeah. have three minutes, right? Yeah. So oh. I think for those three minutes, oh, Donna, okay. we should do something. And I've, yeah, then we I've shouldn't been, bounce the panel. We've been I've been waiting like almost all day to do this, right? Oh, no. And um, I feel like we should practice the socially distant high five in between the frames. One, two, three. No, the other way. The other way. No, you got to go the, like, you see the screen right here? What are you doing? I'm trying to high five you. No, no, what, what, what so are you, you saying? Do Stop. you see my hand in the, in the frame? Like, no. you got to get your hand. I don't on see the, your hand in the frame. No, like right there. Where? where? Like the, there. You oh, see, so which hand? This hand, because we're like high fiving in between. No, not a. This, we're, this is going to take like three minutes. So, <laughs> what are you saying? Like, I'm trying to like give you a I high five. I don't understand what you're saying. Like, Stop. in the TV. Okay. Now I'm just hitting your elbow. This is. <laughs> That's just, not working. I can't. It's okay. Just, it's not working. Oh my gosh. Was she like yeah. trying to like raise the roof there? Yeah, I was. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, let's just do this thing. <laughs> And that's what we're doing. That's what it's going to Oh my gosh. That was horrible and yeah. wonderful all yeah. at the same time. By the way, someone terrible. said in the in the chat, mm -hmm. our Twitch link said, that Seth guy is really awesome. And I you know what I, I thought to I, myself? I don't think so. Thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Is it is it Seth's mom? <laughs> yeah. Has she learned to build a power? Oh yeah. my goodness. Okay, no, but everyone can, right? And everyone in the world can build up. You saw Kathy has made her dad start building power apps. So if Kathy can coerce her dad, any of you can be coerced and coerce someone else in your life. And please go build a thing and then coerce someone else in your life, that just right. like our panel is going to tell you how they've done it too. By the way, do you hear Cameron yelling at us from the, uh, oh. there's, a, there's that glass okay. window covering it up. La, la, la. Okay. All right. Over to our panel for real. Panel, are you here? We're going to keep talking. Hey everybody, I'm back. 
Uh, hey, this is Joe Camp. Um, this session is how I DIY'd my career growth. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> there are no demos, so I'm not going to lose any files in this session. So that's really good. So you guys are fortunate in that respect. Um, today, and today what we've done is we've gone through probably like 18 different sessions um, where our speakers have talked about Power BI, they've talked about Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agent, AI Builder, um, Power Power Apps. Gosh, mm -hmm. I'm, that's the one that I should never forget. Um, and the speakers have all um, been very diverse in that their backgrounds are a little different. So we've had a couple of Microsoft folks. Um, we've had a bunch of people from the community that have backgrounds that are like a former teacher. We've had a number of students. Uh, we have we've had somebody from, you know, that works in government. And it's really cool how all of these people, some have computer backgrounds, some don't, and they're leverage how they're leveraging um, this, this platform, Power BI, or excuse me, Power Platform, and all the components therein. Um, and so in this session, what we wanted to do was leverage that and those stories and then bring in three more folks um, to talk about their stories or kind of ask, and, and I mean this very sincerely, uh, I've met these folks over the past three months or so, two, three months, um, and their stories are, for me, very aspirational and inspirational um, as to you know where the, what they were doing at some point in their life and how they've uh, matriculated into um, where they are now um, leveraging Power BI or learning to leverage Power BI, not Power BI, Power Platform. Um, and honestly, I'm I'm one of those one of those people. And so let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip my screen around here. Hopefully, I'm not gonna mess anything up like I did earlier today. I think I stopped sharing. And so in this screen, um, I've got three folks. I don't know if you guys can can all wave, just wave, be friendly. <laughs> um, that um, are going to tell their story. So we have uh, Mary Thompson in the middle. We have up top um, Anna. And in the bottom, we have Jonathan. And so what I'm going to do with every one of these folks is, you know, just going to kind of go person by person and ask them to share their their story. Um, and then I'll share my story um, as to where I was and where I am now. And uh, then we'll have a very informal q and I have some questions for them um, that I know are going to stump them and, you know, make them stutter and all that sort of stuff. I'm just kidding be very easy questions. Um, but I think they'll be interesting and they'll be interesting for you all based off of some of the comments that I've seen uh, in the uh, in the chat. So anyway, with that, um, Mary, I'm going to start with you, if that's okay. If you could just kind of tell a little bit about yourself, where you are now, and kind of how you got there. And be as, be as free as you want to. That'd be great. Great. So I'm Mary Thompson. I'm super excited to be here this evening and talk a little bit without y'all and share my story. Um, I've been in tech for about two years now, so not a really long time, still getting my feet wet, still trying to figure everything out. But how I really got here was um, I was using AX, actually. I was an end user. I was using AX. Um, I was working my tail off in... Um, in a job in manufacturing and operations and accounting and kind of doing a bunch of things, working sometimes 10, 12 hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. And I worked really hard to get there. I thought that I thought that was something at that point. Um, I was a single mom and worked my way through school with my son. And when I was doing all this, I realized I never got to see him. And I wanted more. And I knew I was capable of more. And I got a really great opportunity to get into consulting. And honestly, when I got there, I had no idea what it meant, but I knew I had to take a risk and just and just try it and see what it was all about. And for me, one of the biggest reasons that I made this change into something that I had no clue what it was is because honestly, it paid twice as much 
is what I was currently making. And now money isn't everything, that's definitely for sure. But coming from where I was and always really, really, really struggling to even keep like food on the table and the lights on, um, it definitely made a big difference. So whenever I got into consulting, I still had no clue what I was doing, but I was able to use the community to really leverage, um, you know, kind of getting help and different things. And I was able to stumble into App in a Day, which led me to the amazing Power Platform, um, which really, I think my career really took off from there. I was really able to network and meet a bunch of really great people. And so now I still do consulting. Um, I work with Business Central currently, but I also get to have a lot of fun with Power Apps and meet really cool people. So that's a really quick overview of my story and where I'm now. Great, thank you, Mary. Um, and so like I said, um, inspirational story, this is one of three. Um, really cool that, um, you know, you, you, you did what you did and you didn't let things drag you down. So um, kudos to you, it's, it's awesome, great story, love it. Um, Jonathan, how about you, my man? Yeah. Um, now's, your, now's, your chance, now's your chance to call out your brother. Oh yeah, so this is, this is how it all started, <laughs> deceit and trickery, <laughs> the, pretty much the best way that I can put it. Um, you know, I'm currently a work at home supervisor, so I've been doing this pretty much since before COVID. So everybody that's been working from home now and trying to get acclimated to it, you know, I've probably been in the bunker for like five years now. So nothing's really changed with my life as far as work. Um, but kind of how I wanted to start getting into tech, I mean, I originally started college, um, you know, 15 years ago, um, wanting to do computer programming. It just did not click for me. I didn't learn that way. Um, it was extremely frustrating. Um, so I, I transitioned out of that, um, started working through call centers, doing customer service, um, doing some business planning at, at other positions, and finally ended up at the job that I'm at now, where I am coincidentally a tech support supervisor, but just not as in depth with it. Um, but pretty much through talking to my brother, we have our daily, weekly event sessions about things not working properly and, you know, just the changes, especially with COVID going on. Um, as you know, like a lot of people were losing their jobs and things like that. And, um, you know, seeing in my company, sometimes there was a big loss of people. So I'm like, I need to start thinking of something different. And, you know, he'd periodically be like, hey, you need to start programming again. You need to get into programming. And I kept telling him it's not, <laughs> like, it's just not my thing. My brain doesn't work that way. I'm not analytical in any sense of the way like that. Um, but he caught me on a good day and finally broke down. I was like, all right, I'll do Code Academy. Um, I started the 100 Days of Code, um, got into SQL a little bit, a little bit of Python. And um, then one day he decides to send a tweet out on my birthday, which pretty much started this snowball effect of why I'm here. Um, you know, I'm starting to get all sort of follows and mentions and stuff, like verified Twitter accounts and people volunteering telling me that I have to do things. And, <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty much a wild ride. Um, but just looking at the other conferences, like I did um, MS Ignite, I was in, watch that. Just seeing what people could do with Power Platform, um, not doing a whole lot of coding. Like I said, it's low code, no code. Um, and even just a lot of the things that I've seen today are just extremely inspirational. And I'm like, okay, this is this is something that I want to continue doing and, you know, using my creativity to, you know, further my career. Cool. Yeah, I want to, I'm going to follow up with that in just a minute. So um, to keep thinking about your, what, what, what inspired you? Cause I'm going to, I'm going to be definitely coming back to you. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so Anna, tell me a Hi. little bit about yourself and uh, you know, how you, what you're doing now, how you got here. Um, that sort of stuff. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I'm Ana. I'm from Uruguay. I'm from South America, a very tiny country between Argentina and Brazil. Some of you may know it, but it's not as known. So I'm a psychologist and I got here because two years ago I was uh, unemployed and I didn't know, knew where to go. 
So I ended up working for a Microsoft partner company as an HR assistant uh, in the typical process for HR hiring and recruiting and onboarding and that kind of processes. And the most interesting part is what was that we had available the technology to improve business and improve processes. And I started to use all the technology that we had to uh, approach the processes from the department, from the HR department. So that helped us to be more um, quick. Uh, or we, ha we had a, another velocity. We, we could respond better to the business. And uh, two years later, I'm working as a consultant for Dynamics for Human Resources. And I'm, I'm also working for uh, Power Platform. And uh, that's my journey. I'm a psychologist. Uh, my career is a psychologist. And I had the chance to switch from uh, HR, uh, typical HR, to projects. And I've been project manager. I've been uh, also leading some courses on adoption of some tools. And now I'm fully dedicated to consultancy for the HR. So that's my journey, Joe. Cool. So. Um... I want to leverage. I want to. I want to kind of ask you a question about that before I tell my story, real quick, uh, since I got this on my mind. So you switched from HR to consultancy. So the the skill set that you have in HR, um, what what are some of those skills that you had in HR that you feel have have uh, helped you in consultancy? Uh, one of the things that I that I always had, and I think that helped me also with community and with consultancy is this approach that I have with people. I'm very likely to build relationships. It doesn't matter the field that I'm that I'm working on. So I, 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 as I build a relationship with you all, I also build relationship with clients and with customers. So that's something that we also use to uh, use in HR. Uh, but the thing that helped me to or consultancy was my man, my, my man, mindset. I'm sorry, my mindset. So I was uncomfortable with the way that things worked, and this helped me to understand the processes from another approach. And now, when I go and talk to a client about their pain points, uh, they feel like they're heard, heard that someone is listening to their problems and understanding them um, correctly. So I have this ability to talk to the customers from their pain points. And that's a win for me. Cool. And so the, re and the reason I bring that up and I kind of wanted to highlight on that um, for those that are on the call and that are maybe not in tech right now or thinking about tech is, um, you know, the, there's, the, there's the classic um, kind of thought process of when you're a developer, you're just sitting in front of a machine and you're just, you know, you're just kind of hack. You're just hacking away, writing code, um, with, and that's and that's true in some senses. But you need, to, if you think about it in broader terms, in broader, you know, kind of a broader brush, um, there are so many skill sets that come across from different um, different disciplines that are applicable to to coding and to power platform um, and being able to look at. Um, and I think we brought some of this out in today's conversations with the number of different sessions where you probably saw that, you know, you think about a, you, you, as, a, as a subject matter expert of a specific process, you think about tying a power app into a, with, um, with Power Automate and then that feeds into like a Power BI uh, dashboard. And that's a pretty cool, pretty cool skill set to have. But you're thinking, but you're able to think that way because you understand the process, the business process. So I kind of got a little derailed, but I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit. And so just to, I'll talk about me just real quick um, because it's not about me. It's about the the three the three lovely people on the on the um, on this uh, on, on this panel, excluding me. Um, my background for <laughs> my background for those on the for those who don't know me. Um, um, I was in uh, financial, service for, financial services for 17, 18 years. Uh, the extent of my tech background uh, was uh, using Excel spreadsheets to maximize profit and loss for, for a bank. Um, and that was my job. Uh, and then um, 
at a very high level. And then there was financial crisis and my bank did not fare too well. And so I needed to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, and really other banks were in the same position as the bank that my bank was in. Um, and we were living in Seattle and my wife, my wife basically said, you need to figure out how we can stay here. <laughs> and it, it, indirectly, my wife is the one who got me into tech. <laughs> she, uh, um, a friend of mine, a uh, neighbor of mine, uh, worked for Microsoft and, uh, he said, you know, I had this, I had this vendor role. Um, you may have an interest in it. We started talking over a couple of months and I went in as a vendor, um, and started working for the Microsoft MVP program. Uh, and it was all, uh, relationship management, uh, project management, uh, logistics, that sort of stuff, a little bit, of, not so much tech related, but more internal. Uh, relationship management, relationship building. Um, did that for a while and then moved over to the Windows Insider program, which is where I met Donna. Um, and um, we were at an event and I told Donna, this was four years ago. I said, you know, I kind of have an interest in in uh, learning how to code. And her eyes just kind of went like this. I mean, she's like, <laughs> oh. you know, and I'm, I'm like, obviously I had a target on me, like you are a victim. Um, and so I was, I was said, she said, well, you know, you need to try this. And this was, um, um, online, you can, through edX, you can take, uh, Harvard's intro CS 50 class and it's their intro. Sorry. It's their intro to computer science. I took, I started that class four times, never finished it. Um, and the reason I, the reason I never finished it one, I guess I'll be, to be very honest, I probably wasn't as motivated as I should have been, but I was also working 10 to 12 hours a day. And, um, at the time I had a really active family four kids, mm -hmm. soccer games and a bunch of other stuff. And then there was this, and I felt like that I didn't want to miss that. I didn't want to miss what they were doing. And so I put learning and I put my self development on the back burner. Um, July comes around. And Donna says, Hey, I've got this, this role on this team, power apps, power apps team. Would you have an interest in it? I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so now part of my job is to learn, which is cool. Um, I kind of regret not taking more of that CS stuff, but I'm learning a ton. Um, and, uh, you know, in, within the last few months, I built a couple apps, um, a couple demos, one that didn't go very well. Or just went <laughs> You know, if you can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at anybody. So I've been laughing at myself a lot today. So anyway, that's kind of my story. Um, so what I wanted to do is I have some questions for you guys. Um, these are not hard questions, but um, they're really they're really relevant to what I was just talking about, um, about uh, learning and kind of life balance. And so like Mary, you, you went from... Um, you had, you know, you were kind of working in one role, went to another role. You talked about your son, uh, single mom. Um, obviously during that time you're having to learn mm -hmm. how are you in just maybe some best practices, or I don't know how you did it, but honestly, I really don't. Um, but learning, balancing, learning life and work. I mean, how did, how did that all play out for you? Man, that has been a journey for me over the, like the last 11 years. My son is 11 years old now. And literally the day that I went into the hospital to give birth, I was also, I was on, I was doing school online then too. And I had an exam that day. So I finished that up, you know, a few hours ahead of time. But, um, Gosh. yeah, so it's, it's real. So, wow. but, but to say, you know, there's, it's, it, there's sacrifice involved, but there's also time management is absolutely like everything to me. And, um, you know, in, in the beginning, there was, a, there was a lot of his life that I, I missed in the sense of I was either working or I was going to school. But for me personally, I knew that the sacrifice was worth it because he was going to be older at some point and, and, and I needed to have a better life for us. So, so that's one thing is I would say is sometimes you have to kind of weigh, weigh your sacrifices and some of them are worth it and some of them aren't. And that's just me personally. That's not to say that's what like everyone wants to jump in and do. Um, I'm a pretty early morning person. And, you know, so it's like sometimes I'm, I'm actually trying, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm trying to take the MB800 tomorrow morning 
And so there's like things like I'll be laying in bed and like looking over like the Microsoft Learn. I love the fact that you can look at it like on your phone because I like I'm laying in bed trying to learn or we were at the football game earlier and I'm like trying to go through there and like do a couple things or I'm, st I'm sitting in the school line because I'm the crazy mom that has to be there 30 minutes before school gets out so I can get it, pick them up. And again, I'm like Microsoft Learn on my phone. So I think it's just kind of defining what your priorities are and understanding that some sacrifices are worth it and, and, and time management is everything. And I think I've always been really fortunate to, to know what I wanted out of life. Like I, I think it's important to have your own goals that are very specific to you because if you're trying to chase somebody else's goals, you're not going to be motivated if you're just trying to follow somebody else's path. So I've always been very, um, very motivated by knowing exactly what I wanted to do. And, and just having the drive to be able to go after that. So I don't know if those are best practices yeah. or not. I think I think my husband would say that I work way too much. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but it, at the end of the day, like I'm happy. I'm happy with what yeah. I'm doing. Um, always ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I would have to do so much more if I didn't always like reach out to the to the Twitter community, hashtag power addicts, hashtag flow flam, like those, that is your go-to, any of the community sites. So it's just, just having the drive to do it. And, uh, and yeah, you know, so. very good. Very cool. So John, Jonathan, Johnny, angry Johnny. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you would, you would say, I have a question for you and you had said something about earlier. Uh, and I asked that you would just kind of think about this a little bit. Some of the, you know, the sessions that you set through today, um, and I saw in the I saw in the chat you like, oh, this has made me think about doing this or uh, maybe think about doing something like this. What are you had some and I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but I'm kind of curious from an inspirational perspective or some of the stories that you that you heard. How do you well, let me back up the the sessions that we learned are the sessions that we that we saw. Um, I know you had put some put some thought into maybe some 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 apps or maybe some things that you might put into practice. Can you can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so as far as the sessions go, like I don't think I can just pick from just one and be like that was it. I feel like every single one somebody had a problem, just a regular you know any day problem, and they used the power platform to fix it. And for me, I just started thinking, I mean, I know initially Donna gave me and my brother homework. And this is before like, I told you, I was like brand new to this. I didn't even know what Power Apps was. And I'm getting homework and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Um, so just even looking at the sessions today, um, I have a little something on the, on the docket that me yeah. and my brother are going to be working on. Um, cool. Give you a little hint. <laughs> okay. But, um, Very good. He and I, uh, you know, I, I actually texted him. I was just in the middle of watching one of the sessions, and then it just hit me. And I'm like, "All right, I think I, I think I have something that uh, we can do." But I mean, really, everything with the Power Platform has pretty much been inspirational because you see people that don't code, and this was this was me, like the same person that was complaining, like, "Oh, I don't do tech. I don't program. I don't code." Pretty much everybody on this panel, everybody that is actually presented that doesn't code. They're actually doing the same things, so yeah. yeah, it was it was pretty inspirational. Um, like I said, I, I have to talk to him because he has a whole other set of things that he has to do. But um, yeah, we're we're gonna build something here. All right, well, you're on the hook now. You know, this yeah, is this, I put it out there, so we're you're on the hook. Something. Yeah. So, Anne, I got a question for you, and that's the you know when you when you move from HR into consulting and that sort of stuff, and you built. A couple different apps. Think back to the very first app um, or Power Automate or BI that you you built. Kind of give us a little bit of if you can, you know, I don't a little bit of insight as to as to that app and how did you feel when you were done? <laughs> um, <laughs> nice question. You know what's funny that I had the chance to work with Catherine Fer Ferreira. The she mm -hmm. presented a session. That it was amazing about Twitter and Teams. 
but we worked together. He was the, the developer and I was the project manager. So we, we went through experience that was challenging. You can't imagine how challenging it was because we, we need to develop a power app uh, that was connected to SAP and also at the other end, it was connected with Dynamics for Human Resources. And that was a lot of process to, to create. And um, when we finished, we realized of course, we, we, we had a lot of lessons learned, but we realized that our product was uh, working and that was amazing because we were the, the two of us, we were new in this, in this kind of solutions. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard work, hard working at the end of the day to have this solution built. And also two people that were very, very new in this kind of uh, pro uh, product or solutions were able to build something. Uh, by the combination of the technology and the uh, uh, knowledge of the processes of the business. So it was uh, for for both of us, and I'm talking uh, uh, for, for both of us, it was very, um, a, a very uh, reconforting, uh, I don't know if that's the word, but it, is worth, it was a very nice moment mm -hmm. to see the app working. So yeah, that was. Cool, uh, that's awesome. Love it. Yeah, you know, the, the app that I built earlier today uh, for everybody, um, I felt I felt this kind of feeling of elation when I first built it, right? This like, wow, um, because I've never done anything like that before. So anyway, um, all right, so we have just a few minutes left. Um, I'm just going to go person by person, if you don't mind, just kind of give us what, some parting advice for, for those that are on, that are listening in. Um, where, you know, some just advice on where they should go next. Go next. Mm -hmm. So Mary. Um, okay. So I think that where you should go next is know, know what you want. And that's pretty challenging all in itself sometimes, but just know what you want and then go after it and don't stop until you do. And when you get stuck, reach out to the community because you're not alone in this adventure. As you hear, we all we all have our own struggles and we all have our own victories. So you're not alone. Know what you want to do and don't stop till you get there. Great. Jonathan, how about you, sir? Um, I would say just go out and try things. Um, you know, you may go into a specific programming language or a, a different field that you know, you may have interest in and it, you may lose interest. It may not be your fit, um, but you have to continue trying and eventually you'll find the fit. Um, the other thing I would say is get linked in with the community. Um, you know, like I, I alluded to earlier, my brother put me on the spot on Twitter. I have tons of, of people now that I can reach out to. I mean, including you two, Joe as well. Um, there's a ton of resources out there that can help you. Um, MS Learn, obviously, do that, do the, the um, Cloud Skills Challenge. I mean, it's a lot different than, I would say, things were, you know, 15, 20 years ago. There are so many different resources that you can learn from. Um, so just get out, try something. That's pretty much it. Just get out and try something. <laughs> Oh, great. Awesome. Anna, we have just a few seconds left. Any any parting advice for those on the call? Yes. Three steps uh, for this journey. The first step is community. Reach out to the community. Everyone is available to help you. The second one is about learn the solutions, the solutions you're interested in. Just go and uh, do the thing. You have available a lot of material in MS Learn and uh, also there are a bunch of uh, community leaders um, presenting and sharing the knowledge. And the third is about mindset. Just believe in yourself, as uh, some speakers said today, believe in yourself and just go for it. If you believe in yourself, you're capable of doing it. So that's my advice. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So um, gals and guys, sorry. <laughs> um, so um, we are, I think we're actually over time. Uh, these are great conversations. Uh, um, Anna, Mary, and Jonathan, thank you so much for your time today, uh, late in the evening for all of you, I know. Um, uh, greatly appreciate it, greatly appreciate your insight. And to everybody on the call, thanks for, um, thanks for listening in. And I think we'll say goodbye. So thanks, everybody.
Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. That was fantastic, right? Uh, we got to hear from some folks that are that transitioned over, that are making a transition mm -hmm. over to doing technology, and it's actually really great. And you know what? One of the things is we've kind of we've kind of razzed uh, producer uh, Cameron the whole mm -hmm. time, and we just wanted to give him a shout out yeah. here. Um, he's Take here them. with us, like right in studio. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, yeah. we. Mm -hmm. We sometimes don't consider you as helpful as mm -hmm. we should have, um, but I feel like you've done a really good job uh, mm -hmm. shepherding us through this difficult, long... No, it's actually wonderful. Everything... Are you going to say anything to me? No. No, nah, he said enough to you, Seth. He's, he, he's done being helpful. He is done. That was awesome. Uh, I learned a ton. Uh -huh. And like I said, this was for start dev change. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I think those three words are very good. Yeah. You want to start something, mm -hmm. let's make it, let's be the dev and let's change our world by the technology that we create. And you don't have to be a tech person mm -hmm. until you make it. And then you are a tech person. Uh, just so you know, because you're watching this conference, you're a tech person. Non-tech non people don't randomly watch these nerds talk about tech for two days. Mm -hmm. It's not common. Although half of you are here for the good jokes. W which half? Uh, you know, uh, previously someone said, Seth should be a mime so he'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a comedy <laughs> Just That was not my mom. That, in fact, no, she was such mom. She has told me to be quiet, though. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a little extra loud. I think it's because I have so much to share. Mm -hmm. So much to share. That's right. So, Donna, should we wrap up with the yes. final three slides? We'll take a look yes. at these things. And then, uh, why don't you take us out as okay. the, the, the challenger-in-chief who, who mm -hmm. gives all the challenges out. So, don't, let's not sure. forget uh, free certifications with cloud the Cloud Skills, Skills Challenge. Challenge. Make sure you mm -hmm. go with that. Uh, By the way, like 250 of you have already signed up booyah. and are doing this. So let's see this get up to 500 because booyah. I bet we can do it. And there will be some experts uh, mm -hmm. on the 20th yep. uh, for Azure Fundamentals, on the 27th mm -hmm. for Power Platform. The next one is Microsoft Learn is mm -hmm. there. Uh, complete interactive learning exercises, watch videos, practice, mm -hmm. and apply your new skills. Make sure you go to that goodness right there. And then finally, yep. the Power Platform Community Conference next week. Reflection, connection, direction, introspection, mm -hmm. all the every section. Every, all, yes, uh, October 22nd, 2020, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Any mm -hmm. final closing thoughts, my friend? You know, this has been amazing because this is not just a conference where we regurgitate tech information to a bunch of people who already know it already. This is where we at Microsoft and the community had to challenge ourselves and say, why should people get into this industry that we're in? How can we explain the why? It's far less about the how you do it or what you should build. It's more about the why you should be in it. And I hope today and yesterday we have shown you why this matters so much. Why it's not enough that there's how many ever millions of people out there who write code, build code, write apps, build apps. It's still not enough. This has to be a job that more people in the world have. As you've seen so many times, there are 150 million tech jobs that will be open, not filled, 150 million open tech jobs across industries. These will be in retail, finance, manufacturing. So at Dish Network, where Johnny Sinclair works, guess what? There's going to be like 500 open tech jobs vacant looking for people. This is going to be at every company, every organization on the planet, and it's our job to help you achieve more. So thank you so much for being here with us. From me, Donna Sarkar, and him, Seth Juarez, and our amazing crew of people who actually made this conference happen, Cassie Burview on the chat, Jenny, on, who's on the chat, Joe Camp on the chat, Sylvia Atkins on the chat, Cameron and Ryan, Ryan our producers in the studio. None of this would be possible without them. Seth and I get to stand in front of you and engage with you all day, but they're the ones doing all the hard work. We are all highly, highly findable on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on random dev streams. And it's been an absolute joy to engage with you. We'll see you out there. Do the thing. Take care, my friends.